You want me to put that on my todger? Ten reasons why she'll never succeed. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. This one's wife is very much focused on her success. The pursuit of the prime aims underpins this thirst, this obsession for success. In her mind, success is being wealthy, being famous, being loved, adored, and admired. All of those things cater to the prime aims. By being wealthy, she can use that wealth to control people, to draw reactions from them. By being famous, she can utilize that fame to make the money, which is a residual benefit. She can use that fame to control. Do you know who I am? She can utilize that fame to draw fuel from other people. The love, the adoration, the admiration, all demonstrates that people are under control and is the provision of fuel. Thus, success to her takes that form and it's something that she pursues, driven by her narcissism. You might argue that she has achieved some success. She is, of course, internationally famous or you might suggest infamous. However, with that infamy comes a lot of repeated challenges to her need for control. Yes, she has her supporters, but there's a lot of criticism. There's a lot of threats to her control, which arise from people commenting on her behaviours. She has achieved wealth, of that there's no doubt, but she's nowhere near as wealthy as people first thought. As time has gone along, it's become apparent, for instance, that she didn't get all of the Spotify money, that the size of the Netflix deal doesn't bear any representation to how much she's actually achieved from that. Furthermore, there have been considerable overheads associated with content creation and just day-to-day -day living. She's still wealthier than many people, that cannot be denied, but she's a long way away from the Oprahs of the world, which is where she'd like to be. Accordingly, she succeeded, perhaps in part, but it's not enough. It's not enough for her narcissism, it wants more. And thus, she is on this path to want to pursue success. Nevertheless, that whilst her narcissism drives her to pursue this success, she will never achieve it. And here are ten of the reasons why she won't. And they're all related to her narcissism. And there you have the paradox. Her narcissism demands that she achieve success for the reasons that I've explained. But at the same token, her type of narcissism isn't suited for the high-level success that she is pursuing. Some narcissists are suited to it. They can get it, and they can keep it. She's partially got it, and she's losing it. And she'll never get it to the level that she believes that she's entitled to. And here's why. Number one, she simply cannot connect with people. She has no emotional empathy, and her cognitive empathy repeatedly misfires. This produces the repeated criticism of her in relation to her inability to read the room. She's no empath in the way that, for instance, Diana, Princess of Wales, was, exuding a magnetism that drew people to her, an ability to empathise and understand people, to ease their fevered brows, to soothe their beating breast. This one's wife isn't even able to create a convincing appearance 
of caring, because at the heart of it, she simply isn't interested. Now, some narcissists are very good at pretending to care. They have brilliant facades, and their more evolved, sophisticated narcissism enables them to say the right things, adopt the right expressions, to know precisely what needs to be said, to not only make it look like they care, but also to draw people to them and to cause them to connect to that individual. Bill Clinton is an excellent example of this. Not that he was in an over-caring mode or demeanour, but his ability to draw people to him and make them feel like they were the centre of the room has been often spoken about. He flowed with charisma, and therefore even though he is a narcissist, he had that ability to connect people to him. He, of course, isn't connected to them, the narcissist never is. But with this one's wife, she can't connect people to her with any level of success either. She just doesn't connect them in the first place, or if she does, there's no longevity to it. And the reason being is that people ultimately sense the transparency about her, because that's what's there and she's not very good at masking it. Number two, she's empty. She is an empty shell. And with that comes a complete lack of originality, which means she has no imagination. She has no sense of humour. She has no magnetism. She has no charisma. All of those things are integral to a person's success. She lacks them all. She is a woman of no substance. I have long explained this to people, and South Park picked up on this memorably with having Harry look inside, flipping her head back and looking inside and then just having an echo, finding that there is nothing within. And this emptiness, this lack of sophistication, is such that it isn't enough to propel her to the level of success that she demands. Number three, she copies. This, as you know, is character trait acquisition, which is one of the prime aims. It links into the fact that she's empty. She mimics. She repeats. She creates a facsimile. She does this because she has no originality and because she's empty. But also it's driven by her narcissism to create this construct with a view to trying to make people attracted to her. We have seen it with regard to the way that she utilised a cartoon to suggest that she had attended a Korean spa and ate noodles. She utilised the Catherine Zeta-Jones advertisement, where she claimed to crawl out of the back of a car. She commandeered a class project and claimed that it was her singular project that caused Procter & Gamble to change an advertisement. She has utilised the quotations of other people and passed them off her as her own. The reason she doesn't succeed is that there are so many people watching her, noting what she is, waiting for the next cock-up on her part, that all of these mimicries, the copying, the plagiarism that she engages in, gets spotted, and therefore it results in people thinking, you're a fraud, you've no originality, you've no talent, and you steal from other people. That is not seen as a likeable trait and therefore hinders her success. Number four, she is a hypocrite. Owing to the necessity of asserting control in the now, her narcissism has no due regard for what was said before or what will happen next. This means that while she is consistent with regard to the pursuit of the prime aims, she is inconsistent with regard to many other things, and this results in her being a hypocrite. She speaks out about the environment and then gets on private jets. She talks about being a vegan or a vegetarian and then is seen eating meat. She preaches about how the world should be kinder and then she has nothing to do with her ailing father. She bleats about being a victim of bullying, but then does nothing to support her sister-in-law when she is subjected to the same. There's a long list of the hypocrisies of this one's wife. 
and nobody likes a hypocrite, and therefore that hinders her success. Number five, collateral consequences. Linked to her hypocrisy is the fact that because her narcissism operates in the now, that it pursues those prime aims, not yesterday, not in 15 minutes' time, but now, that results in a problem for this one's wife because it creates collateral consequences. Thus, she will say, for instance, Oh, let it be known that I have a freakish eye for detail, and I would never have made a schoolgirl error as that as which Catherine has. Oh dear, here are lots of photographs that you were involved with that are all digitally enhanced and clearly photoshopped. Uh oh, you've just demonstrated once again that not only are you a hypocrite, you told a porky pie. And this regularly happens with this one's wife because her level of narcissism isn't up to the job, but also she's invited so much scrutiny of herself as a consequence of wanting to be famous. And also there are, as I've mentioned before, so many people waiting to check what she does. Accordingly, she gets caught out time and time again with regard to collateral consequences. Many narcissists don't because there's nobody really keeping tabs on what they're saying or what they're doing. And if there is, it's only really perhaps an intimate partner and perhaps somebody in the family. Everybody else doesn't really remember. But when it comes to this one's wife, because she's so prominent and because there is so many people that are wanting to keep an eye on what she's doing, she gets caught out by these collateral consequences. Number six, she's lazy. There are certain narcissists that are industrious. This one's wife is not one of them. Her narcissism wants the easy route, which means that she never really sticks at anything, that she's slow to produce things. It took her nearly two years to produce the dross that was archetypes, that Pearl never got off the ground, that we've seen this repeated, oh, um, I'm coming back to Insta, and then when she does... It's just a launch page for the new care home, American Riviera Orchard. Her narcissism is part of her laziness, in that if it can get something without causing her to expend energy and effort and resources, it will. Thus, she takes a lazy route. But the problem is, once again, she's exposed for this laziness, which doesn't endear her to anybody that might propel her to success. Why would you want to be involved with someone who has a reputation for laziness when you need them to create interesting content? Why would you be involved with someone that has a reputation for cutting corners and being lazy when you need somebody that would be industrious and bring verve and vigour to your brand? You would not. Number seven. She's entitled. She expects money for nothing and her chicks for free. She went to Australia and remarked, I can't believe I'm not being paid for this walkabout, for this meet and greet. She believes that just by virtue of turning up and her being her, that she should be paid and adored. She doesn't understand that more is required, and this entitled attitude does not endear her to people, nor brands, nor cosmetic giants, and so forth. Number eight, she is unpopular. This is wholly as a consequence of her behaviour, which has been driven, as you know, by her narcissism. It has nothing to do with her skin colour. It has nothing to do with her being American. It has nothing to do with her being female. Her lack of popularity is based upon her own repeated behaviours, which she cannot see because she's blinded by her narcissism, and the sugars cannot see because they're blinded by their idiocy. Number nine. She plays the victim far too often. All narcissists have a victim mentality, but a middle-mid-range narcissist, which is what this one's wife is, flexes that victimhood on a regular basis. The world is against her, and in such circumstances it causes her to always play the victim, which, after a while, gets old very quickly. Particularly in the United States, where there is very much an emphasis amongst the population, I see it as part of their DNA, that it's a case of, if there's a problem, it's not, what should the government do, but what can we do to change this? There is an emphasis on self-improvement and self-help, and therefore, playing the victim, 
although there are plenty of individuals that do that, is something that is not seen as an enviable trait. It's not something to be aspired to. And she has done this over and over again. And people, in effect, don't want to be associated with the losers, with the victims. They want to be associated with the successful. And thus, not only playing the victim and being seen as unsuccessful is not attractive, but furthermore, the regularity by which she engages in this becomes very tiresome. Number 10. She smears far too often. This is again not an endearing trait. The pot shots that she has taken at her family, the way that she has treated her family in terms of her father, her half-siblings, her in-laws, does not endear her to people. Again, in the United States, there is a particular emphasis on family. And in those circumstances, her mistreatment of her family does not go down well. You know that her mistreatment stems from the necessity of asserting control over them by smearing, by nullifying the threats to control that they pose, again, driven by her narcissism. These ten factors all mean she will never succeed, and all ten factors arise from her narcissism. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.